Hello, we're up here on Shamis Peak, 360 degree view of this beautiful Northern California. But we're up here today testing the Windsor 4300 mountain bike. Um, bought from Bikes Direct. Paid $350 for this bike. And it's been an excellent bike. We're on, I'm on my, uh, we're on the second year now. So this is the first, this is the first review I've had on this bike. And it's, uh, it's had, it's uh, two years old and it's got about 5,000 miles on it. Um, half of those being off-road, half of those being on-road. I ride to the trailheads, so I, do, I never drive to a trailhead. I drive to the trailheads, and I mean, I, I ride my bike to the trailheads. I ride my bike to the trailhead, and then ride the trails. So this bike has been ridden on the trails uh, Every, every time I go out. Uh, this, this bike is used for off-roading, so it's not one of those mountain bikes bought and then used on the road and never sees dirt. Uh, not only is it off-road, but it is up here being used at its extreme in the mountains. The, uh, the surface around here is, is covered in softball-sized rocks, so on descents, this bike has really taken a beating, uh, and it's come through in flying colors. There hasn't been a, hardly a problem with it. Um, it's been a it's been a really good bike. For three hundred fifty dollars, <laughs> this was ten times more than I expected to get. First of all, what you do not get on this bike is the rear rack, the bottles, the bottle cages, the bar end extensions and I've equipped this bike with tow clips which it doesn't come with it may or may not uh, that's changing all the time with bikes direct uh, the only major problem was um, something I knew about and should have fixed but I never did uh, it came with another no-name crank set um, with a no-name crank set uh, if, if it would have felt good I, I, I probably would have kept it but uh, it, uh, it, it had a lot of flex in it, <clears throat> and I should have replaced it, and I didn't. And climbing a hill on the road, I cracked the crank arm in half. So uh, most likely the crank arm, the cranks that come with it aren't, uh, are not worth keeping. If you feel flex in the crank when you buy it, then get rid of it right away. Replace it. This one's been replaced with a Shimano Alivio. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know. Uh, it's a $35, $40 crank. It's been absolutely wonderful. It, uh, it's plenty stiff enough and it hasn't given me any problems. Uh, it's been a good replacement crank and it, and it, uh, it bolts right up to the, to the uh, tapered bottom bracket that comes with this. The only other problem I've had is uh, one broken spoke in the wheel. Uh, getting two years out of stock wheels is amazing. Uh, it's, again, it's more than I hoped for. Uh, I usually always replace wheels when I buy a bike. I just can't afford to unless, uh, unless I have to. So uh, these wheels will be replaced as soon as possible, but right now they're doing fine. Um, this bike was equipped with uh, some components I never heard of. Uh, these are Sun Race shifters. Uh, they've been the best shifters I've ever used on a mountain bike. And I'm comparing this mountain bike to all the ones I've used. I've been mountain biking ever since they made the first mountain bike. Um, I bought a Ross back in around 1982 when they first came out with a production bike. Um, it was a pretty, pretty low-end steel bike and uh, as soon as Specialized started making the stump jumper, I bought that one. And I used that one up until uh, uh, around the year 2000, where I went to a fairly high-end Jameis full suspension bike. 
Uh, I rode that one for another, oh, seven years or so. And then I finally sold it because uh, the suspension didn't have a lockout and uh, I really didn't want a rear suspension bike anymore. I needed a, uh, and I needed lockouts for uh, riding the road to the trails. So this bike has a lockout on the fork, which works beautifully on the road. You can ride it almost like a road bike. You know, it's, it's, it's slow with the fat tires and all, but uh, uh, it, it does, does fantastic. So I couldn't be happier with the bike. Uh, the modifications I've made to it are only the, uh, the rack and the bar ends <clears throat> and, of course, tires. Um, uh, yeah. Tires are always the most important thing on the bike. Wheels being almost as important, maybe as important. So since this bike is used to get to to the trailheads, I did not want to ride a full knobby. That's just too much strain and uh, resistance on the road, plus you wear the tire out too quickly. So again, I've gone with my specialized tire. These are the Crossroad, which is their, their treadiest uh, trekking tire. It's uh, 1.9. Uh, there's, there's not a whole lot of tread on it, but there's uh, plenty, of, plenty of side knob for quartering. And the, and the, and the uh, top of the tread, of course, is smooth. Um, the only thing I noticed is I had to shift my weight just slightly backwards over the other more aggressive tires. I have to shift my weight slightly backwards to pick up a little more traction on the uphills, and that's about it. I can still hit the front brake fairly hard on the downhills, and these tires will dig in. The tires are rated at a 40 to 80 PSI. I'm running at uh, 50 PSI today, um, which uh, says a lot for their, their comfort level. Being on these heavy-duty rocks at 50 PSI uh, is, uh, and still getting a fair amount of comfort is pretty good. Uh, normally I would run at 40 PSI, but uh, I've been disappointed in the uh, pumps out there for inflation. They take a half hour, to, the little mini pumps take all half hour to reinflate these tires if you can even do it. It takes a huge amount of strength to, <clears throat> to get these tires back up to 60 psi and it's uh, so until I can find a pump that actually works uh, I'm running at a 40 or 50 psi on the road and off-road so I don't have to reinflate. Uh, the frame was um, again more than I expected. It's, it's an aluminum frame, but it rides like a steel. I've, I've been, I was riding my uh, all-steel specialized stump jumper for some 20 years, and when I got on this, I expected that uh, the rear triangle to really beat the heck out of me, and it feels just like the specialized steel. So they've done some real good design work on the uh, rear triangle and, and getting it to uh, be a very comfortable, uh, very comfortable hardtail. I have no complaints with the fork. It's uh, of course it's a, uh, it's a Sun Tour fork. has a has a lockout, uh, four inches of travel, and uh, it's it's smooth enough, uh, and it's fine. The uh, the brakes are the the cheap Tektros, and they've been the best brake I've ever used. I've never used uh, uh, hydraulic brakes because I. I'm too far from home when I'm out here, uh, and I I still trust the uh, mechanical brakes and the cables. I don't want to run into a leak and uh, and run out of brakes out here. Um, I'm just being stubborn, I suppose. But also they're cheaper. But uh, I've used the uh, the, the uh, Avid BB5 and the BB7. These uh, these Tektro brakes blow them away. They've, they've only squealed maybe once or twice in two years when they were probably a little too dirty. Uh, they're extremely smooth and easy to modulate when you brake. Um, they're just absolutely a beautiful brake. And I'm on the original shoes. Uh, and I'm no Gonzal, Gonzai downhiller either. I brake pretty heavy going downhill. I'm, 
54 years old and I can't afford to crash hard and, and break something. So I'm, I'm fairly careful on my downhills. So I use the brakes quite a bit. They heat up enough where if you, where, uh, you pour water on them, the water will boil on them. That's how hot I've been running these. And they're not complaining one bit. Even when they're running that hot, they're still braking well. Really a fantastic brake. So all together, you've got a fantastic bike here. Um, it's eight speed. Uh, out of the two years, of course, I've stretched a chain out of the 5,000 miles. So there's a, there's a new chain and a, and a uh, new cassette on this bike. Um, I went with the, uh, I think it's an HG40 cassette, which I really love. It, it's, a, uh, it's an 1140 mega range. So you have this, uh, you have a great big uh, drop on, a great big uh, gear change from your, uh, from your largest cog to your second largest cog. And I really like that at the end because what it does is it gives me a closer gear ratio for the road. And uh, actually the gear ratios off-road are still pretty good. So uh, as a 22, 32, 42 chain ring and a 11, 34 cassette, this is a full range, uh, 26 inch mountain bike. You wouldn't want to gear it much lower than that because uh, you might as well walk if you're going to be going that slow. Um, again, uh, <coughs> talk a little bit about Bikes Direct. This was uh, delivered on time as they said and I got exactly what they said I was going to get. Um, assembly was easy. Uh, again, those of you buying bikes direct bikes, you have to be somewhat of a mechanic. If you're not, you're going to lose money because you're going to have to take it to a mechanic to fix it up. Um, so you should either know a mechanic or be somewhat of a mechanic competent mechanic to buy factory direct. Um, you can probably still save money by buying a bike from Bikes Direct and paying your local bike shop a hundred bucks to uh, to fix it up. That would bring this bike up to a $450 bike which is uh, still pretty good. The weight of this bike is extremely heavy. Uh, it, must be, it must be at least 32 pounds maybe 34. Again, this is the biggest frame you can buy. Um, and I've talked about weight before. Weight really doesn't matter to me as a recreational cyclist. I would never try to compete on this bike. It would be extremely unfair competing with people on bikes 10 pounds lighter. But for recreational cyclists or long distance cycling out here in the mountains, I don't really care about the weight. I get on these mountain grades, I get into a rhythm, and you just climb. You don't really notice the weight. I notice the uh, uh, course on the road, the bike's, of course, slower than a road bike. Can't help that. Uh, the 26 inch wheels, the fat tires, the lower pressure, um, the uh, 175 millimeter cranks, all these things slow me down a little bit on the road, but. Uh, this is basically, uh, you know, mostly, you know, 90% an off-road bike. So it's been, uh, it's been a wonderful bike. Thank you. For, so so if you're in a market for a mountain bike and you really want to ride off-road, this is a, this is a great way to start at uh, 350 to, I think, uh, I don't think they make the, uh, 4300 anymore. It's a uh, 44 or 4500, and it's uh, I think it's 379 now. Um, still basically the same bike, same frame. Uh, so thank you very much, and uh, see you on the trails.
Here we got a look at the uh, 1134 with the uh, Dior rear derailleur. This is my replacement crank set. It's the uh, Alivio. And I'll give you a, a look at some of the uh, tread pattern here on this specialized tire. As you can see, it's got good shoulder knobs, so cornering is fairly good. The, the, uh, you still get traction in the center with that uh, tractor tread, but you also got a very nice smooth rolling surface for the road. This mountain bike's been all over these mountains, and it has brought me back every time. This is a 360 degree view of Shami's Peak, or off of Shami's Peak, where we're Three hundred sixty degrees up here. This is a, one of my favorite spots, and it's overlooking Shasta Lake. And Shasta Mountain. Here's a view of the uh, average size rocks on these trails up here. As you can see, they're about softball size. So even though this bike isn't being dropped off of big drops, it's still taking a heck of a beating on the downhills going over these rocks.